In this question we're asked to find the first four terms of the expansion of 1 plus kx to the power 6. Um, so let's get on with it. The first term is always the first bit in your bracket to the highest power, so 1 to the power 6. Um, after that we've introduced the second term, um, but you need the coefficient. Okay, So the coefficient of the second term is going to be 6, which is the power, and then we have the first part of the bracket to the power 5, and the second part, which is kx to the power 1. So we've decreased the power of the 1 and brought in kx. Now the 6 comes from doing your binomial coefficient, 6 choose 1, which you can do on the calculator if you like. And the invisible coefficient there is 6 choose 0. But you should know by now that the first coefficient is always 1, and the second coefficient is always uh, the power. So moving on to the third term, we now have 6 choose 2, 1 to the power 4, and kx squared, so we've decreased the power of the 1 and increased the power of kx. Um, and then finally 6 choose 3, 1 cubed times kx uh, also cubed. So you need to notice here that the, the pattern with the power is the power that you have uh, for your bracket continues all the way through. So you've got 1 to the power 6, then 5 and 1, those powers add up to make 6, 4 and 2 add to make 6, and 3 and 3 to make 6. The other thing to remember here is to make sure you don't forget the brackets around the kx or you could lose method marks. So if we tidy that up and we get 1 plus 6kx and then 6 choose 2 is 15. You can check that on the calculator or do it by hand. So 15 lots of k squared x squared when we expand the brackets and 6 choose 3 is 20. So 20 lots of k cubed x cubed. And that is our answer to part A. Right, given that in this expansion the coefficients of x and x squared are equal, we need to find, first of all, the value of k. So, let's investigate this statement and try and write it down mathematically. So the coefficient of x we can see from above is 6k, and the coefficient of x squared is 15k squared. So if you write those two down, we just need to use the fact that we're told that they are equal, which means we can put an equal sign there. So this is an equation now which we just have to solve. Um, now it's very important that k, we're told, is non-zero, and that means we can divide by k, um, because we're not losing a solution because k can't be zero. So if we divide by k, it cancels on the left and on the right, and we end up with 6 is equal to 15k. So we simply divide by 15 to find the value of k. So 6 fifteenths or 2 fifths, and that is my answer to part b. C, it just wants the coefficient of x cubed. Well, look up there, it's 20k cubed, and we know what k is now, so we can work it out. 20 lots of 2 fifths cubed is 20 lots of... 8 over 125, so 20 times 8 is 160, so we have 160 over 125, which cancels down to 32 over 25. And that is the answer to part C, and that's the end of the question. Right, binomial question. Uh, find the first four terms in ascending powers of x of the expansion of 1 minus 2x to the power 5. And we are to give each term in its simplest form. Okay, so uh, always we get the first term is the first bit in my bracket to the power n, so 1 to the power 5. Next, um, second term, the coefficient is always n, so in this case 5. And then we have the first part of the bracket uh, to a decreased power, so going from 5 to 4, and then the second bit of my bracket, which in this case is minus 2x, and I mustn't forget the minus sign, uh, that comes in now to the power 1. Now the 5 here has come from um, doing 5 choose 1, and um, the invisible coefficient in front of that, which is a 1, is from 5 choose 0, but you should know that the first term, first coefficient is always 1, and the second is always n. Third term will then be 5 choose 2, and again the power of the 1 decreases, this time from 4 to 3, and the power of minus 2x increases from 1 to 2. And we want one more term, so 5 choose 3, and again the power of the 1 will decrease from a 3 down to a 2. 
and the power of minus 2x will increase from 2 to 3. And that would carry on, but we've got the terms that we want, the first four terms. We just need to sort it out. Now, pay attention to the powers here. You can check that always in each term, the powers that you've got add up to n. So 4 plus 1 makes 5, 3 plus 2 also makes 5, and 2 plus 3 makes 5. So now we just need to tidy up these terms. Okay, 1 to the power 5 is obviously just 1. Then we have 5 lots of uh, minus 2x, because it's the power 1. And then 5 choose 2, well that's 10. So we have 10 lots of, and well, if you square minus 2x, you get positive 4x squared. So 4x squared goes in there. And then 5 choose 3 is also 10. And you get, well, from this bracket, if you cube it, the minus 2 becomes minus 8, and the x becomes x cubed. So 10 lots of minus 8 x cubed, and so on. It does want our answer in its simplest form, so we'll simplify each of these terms before we finish. 1 uh, minus 10x plus 40x there, and finishing with minus 80x cubed. Um, those are the first four terms, and so that is our answer to part A. In B, we're told that if x is small enough that x squared and higher powers can be ignored to show that this approximation is true. So we start by looking at uh, what we've got on the left-hand side of that, which is 1 plus x multiplied by the thing that we've just expanded. So we're going to naturally use what we've just done. So that is equal to 1 plus x times our answer to part a. 1 minus 10x plus 40x squared minus and so on, ignoring the higher powers of x. Now looking at this, um, a tip to multiply these out um, is to start with the first term in the first bracket and multiply that by everything in the second bracket. So 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times minus 10x is minus 10x, 1 times 40x squared gives you your 40x squared, and so on. That's pretty obvious. Um, but it's useful to then, when you're doing the second bit, so the x, we're going to write that on the line below and align our terms in the powers of x or x cubed and so on. So x times 1 is x, and we write that underneath the minus 10x. x times minus 10x is minus 10x squared, and we write that in the x squared column, and so on. And not so much for this one, but for more complicated expansions, this makes it very easy to simplify things and gather terms together. Anyway, here we've got the 1. Minus 10x plus x is minus 9x. The 40x squared take away 10x squared is 30x squared. But we're going to ignore that 30x squared in a minute because we'll recall that we're told that x squared and higher powers can be ignored. Um, so let's get rid of the 30x squared and we're really just left with 1 minus x. So we can conclude um, that 1 plus x times 1 minus 2x to the power 5 um, is approximately equal to 1 minus 9x, as long as we can ignore x squared and higher powers. And that's it. OK, in this C2 question we're given a function, f of x, and it's a cubic, and we're asked to use the factor theorem to show that x plus 2 is a factor of f of x. Um, now translated, if f x plus 2 is a factor, that would mean that f of minus 2 is equal to 0 by the factor theorem. So this is what we'll try and show. So if we work out f of minus 2, we replace x with minus 2 everywhere in the expression. So minus 2 cubed plus 4 lots of minus 2 squared. Um, plus 1 lot of minus 2, brackets optional there, minus 6. And then we just have to tidy that up. Minus 2 cubed is minus 8. Minus 2 squared is 4, so 4 times 4 is 16. And then we have minus 2 and minus 6. And the key thing about this is it's a show that, so don't miss out this middle step of the working. Or you won't get all the marks. But we do get 0, and therefore we have shown that x plus 2 is indeed a factor of f of x. So part B asks us to factorise f of x completely. And, well, we know from part A that x plus 2 is a factor, and that means that we can divide by x plus 2, um, and that's the technique that we're going to use. Now, my chosen method is to do this by algebraic long division. Uh, you might want to do it by inspection or uh, expanding brackets and comparing coefficients. 
but here we go doing it this way. So we start off by looking at how many times x goes into x cubed and write that up top, which is x squared. And then multiply the x squared by the x plus 2 and write that underneath. So we get x cubed um, plus 2x squared. Next, we're going to subtract this from the line above. Oh, sorry, that should read x cubed there. Um, so x cubed minus x cubed gives me nothing, but 4x squared minus 2x squared gives me 2x squared. And now I bring down the x from above, and I'm ready to do the next iteration. So repeat the process. How many times does x go into 2x squared? Well, it goes in 2x times. So I write that up top, and then multiply the 2x by x plus 2, and write that underneath. So we get 2x squared plus 4x. And again, now I'm going to subtract this line from the line above. And again, as always, the first term, they cancel out. But the second term, x minus 4x, is minus 3x. And finally, bring down the minus 6 and stick that on the end. And we're going to repeat the process one more time. So how many times does x go into minus 3x? Well, the answer there is minus 3. And then multiply that by x plus 2 and write it underneath. And this last part is really just a check because we know that the remainder here is going to be 0. But it checks that I've done it right. Um, if I didn't get 0, it would show that x plus 2 isn't a factor or I've made a mistake. But it is 0, so we're all good. And now I know that f of x can be written as x plus 2 um, multiplied by our answer from the division x squared plus 2x minus 3. And if I want to factorise completely now, all I need to do is take this second bit and factorise that separately as a quadratic. So we have x plus 2, and then this bracket here, well, I need two numbers which multiply to give me minus 3, and add to give me 2, so that's got to be 3 and minus 1. So x plus 3 and x minus 1 are my two brackets, and that is my fully factorised version of f of x. Finally, part c, um, it wants me to write down the solutions to the equation. When it says write down, that's a clue you won't need to do very much. And here we notice that this equation is just f of x equals 0. So I just want the roots of f of x, which I can get from this thing here. Okay, It's anything that makes that equal to 0. So the first bracket gives me x equals minus 2. second bracket gives me x equals minus 3. And finally, I get x equals positive 1. And those are the solutions to my equation. In this question, we're given a function f of x, which is the cubic that you can see here, and we're asked to find the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 2. So using the remainder theorem, that would be what we get when we work out f of positive 2. So let's go ahead and work that out. We get 3 lots of 2 cubed minus 5 lots of 2 squared. Take away 16 lots of 2 and of course plus 12. And if we work that out, we've got 3 multiplied by 8, so that's 24. Take away 5, lots of 4, which is 20. Um, take away 16 times 2, so minus 32, plus the 12. And when we work that out, it comes to uh, minus 16. So that's what f of 2 is, and therefore we can say that is the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 2. Part B, given now that x plus 2 is a factor of f of x, and note that it's x plus 2, not x minus 2, and we're asked to factorise completely. So if it is a factor, we can divide by this, um, and that's what we should do. I'm going to do it by algebraic long division, which is my preferred, preferred method. Um, but if you prefer to do it another way, that's absolutely fine. So I'm dividing by x plus 2, so we start by working out how many times uh, x goes into 3x cubed, which is 3x squared times. So we write that up top in the x squared column, and then multiply that by x plus 2 and write that underneath. So 3x cubed um, plus 6x squared. Next step is to sub subtract what we've just got from the row above. So the x cubed terms cancel out, and then we have minus 5x squared take away 6x squared giving minus 11x squared. Um, then we bring down the minus 16x, and we're ready to repeat the process. 
So next we're looking at how many times um, x goes into minus 11x squared. So the answer would be minus 11x times. So that's what is written up top. And then we multiply that by x plus 2 and write underneath what we get. So minus 11x squared, uh, minus 11 times 2 is minus 22x. And again, we're going to subtract this from the row above. And again, as always, the uh, first two terms cancel out, the x squared terms. But then minus 16x, take away tw minus 22x, gives me plus 6x. Next, bring down the 12, and we're ready to do the final iteration of the division. So how many times does uh, x go into 6x? Well, it goes in 6 times, obviously, and then we're going to multiply the 6 by the x plus 2 and write that at the bottom. And what we're doing here, the last step, because we know that it goes in exactly, we're just checking that the remainder we get is 0, and it is, so we're happy. So that means that I can write my function f of x um, as x plus 2 multiplied by this thing that we just worked out. So 3x squared minus 11x plus the 6. And in order to factorize completely, I just have to take this quadratic and factorize it now. Now the method that I'm going to use um, might not be the same as yours. What I do is I take the coefficients a and c, so in this case uh, the x squared coefficient which is 3 and the final coefficient which is 6, and multiply them, giving 18. And I also write down the value of the x coefficient b, which is minus 11. And looking at those, I know that I need to get two numbers which will multiply to give 18 and add to give minus 11. And well, if they add to give a negative but multiply to give a positive, there must be two negative numbers, and I can think that they've got to be uh, minus 2 and minus 9. Um, so I found these two numbers, and they're going to let me do my factorizing now. So going back over to the left, I've still got the x plus 2. In order to factorize this bracket, I'm going to rewrite it, but instead of writing minus 11x squared, sorry, instead of writing minus 11x, I'm going to write minus 2x and minus 9x, the two numbers that I've just worked out. And the process from this point is to take two adjacent pairs of terms in the quadratic part and factorise them the old-fashioned way, just looking for what goes into both of them. So 3x squared minus 2x, well, the only thing that goes into both of those is x. So I take x out of the brackets, and I'm left with 3x minus 2. Um, then we're looking at minus 9x plus 6. Now I know already that the bracket is going to be 3x minus 2 because it's always the same as the previous one. So that helps me and I can think what needs to go in front of that to multiply out to give minus 9x plus 6 and it would have to be minus 3. So the final step of factorising this, um, the x plus 2 is still there but we look at um, the x and the minus 3. That gives me one of my brackets, so x minus 3 and the other bracket is right there. Uh, 3x minus 2. So you might not do it this way, but however you do it, factorise the second bracket, that is what you get, and that's your final answer.